everybody. My name is Mike LaFave, strength coach at Olympia Fitness and Performance, sitting alongside Dr. Ross Levine from Restore Physical Therapy. And today we wanted to talk a little bit about a common condition that we stumble across in our profession, and that is Oswich Ladders disease. And that is something we typically see in the growing adolescents who are very active, kids who play a lot of sports that involve a lot of running, jumping, cutting, uh, particularly basketball, soccer, football, you name it. But we're just going to talk a little bit about it. I'm writing a little blog on it right now, but I wanted to get a physical therapist perspective on it as well as mine, and hopefully we get some helpful content out to you guys. All right, so I'll let, I'll let Ross talk a little bit about it, and then we'll just have a follow-up conversation. Sure. Thanks, Mike. So uh, my name is Dr. Ross Levine. I work here at Restore Physical Therapy, and we are inside of Olympia Fitness and Performance. Um, so if you haven't been here to check us out, make sure you stop by and check out our facility. Um, Oswich Slaughter's disease is something that we see quite frequently here. Uh, like Mike said, a lot of times it's in the young athlete, right, our youth athletes. Um, but we do see it across the, the lifespan as well. So we will see older clients that do have this as well, that are just active adults trying to you know, live their lives and enjoy the things that they like to do. Um, but basically what Oswich Slaughter's disease is, is as the, the body starts growing, and typically we see this in athletes, young athletes with big growth spurts, um, where the bone is actually growing a lot faster than the muscle. So the muscle can't catch up, it becomes very tight, and the tendon starts to pull on that bony prominence. So because of that, we get this overgrowth of bone, it becomes irritated, inflamed, and then it causes some pain. So generally, that's right at the base of the kneecap here, just underneath it, it's called a tibial tuberosity, right on the shin bone. Um, and a, a good way to notice this, we see that lump start to develop. So that's the common way that we see this uh, present here at Physical Therapy, and I'm sure you guys see it just the same in, in uh, the strength world too. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I've had a lot of times where um, a parent will bring in their, their athlete and will take a tour and they'll be like, oh, by the way, uh, he or she has Oscar sliders, and then the first thing I do, I look down, do I see the bump? Yeah, so that's a very big uh, symptom that we see. Um, so basically what happens is every time we move our leg, our quadricep muscles are pulling on that patella, and the patella is then pulling on the patella tendon, and that's pulling right on that tibial tuberosity that's right above the, at the very top of the shin bone. All right, so that's where that bump typically resides, and all that pulling results in pain, swelling, tenderness, and a lot of times it presents a little bit of, I don't know the word, fright, a little bit of fright in these kids. They're a little scared, they don't know what it is, it's pain. Um, so if your child is, or your young athlete is coming up to you saying, mom or dad, my, my knee's really hurting, that is when it's a good idea to come see a physical therapist or a strength coach who can help you with this. And the beautiful thing about Olympia Fitness and Restore is that we're both in the same building and we can collaborate on these things. So I'll let Ross kind of talk about what his initial um, visit would look like for somebody who fits that description. Yeah, so anybody who comes into our doors and they're talking about knee pain, you know, whether they've been diagnosed with Oswich Slaughter's by their primary care or an orthopedist, um, you know, we're not here to treat a diagnosis, we're here to treat symptoms. So the very first thing we do on all counts is we go through a full evaluation. So if someone's complaining of knee pain, we'll probably start to look from like the waist down. So we'll check the lower back, the hips, the knees, the ankles, and we start to determine, okay, maybe we do have pain in one spot, but are there other weaker areas that need to be addressed um, that might be causing this pain? Um, now, in the, you know, the case of Oswich Slaughter's, it's pretty point specific where we have knee pain, we know exactly where it's coming from, but we're still going to evaluate the entire body, look through the areas, find the root cause of the pain, uh, of the pain and the problem, and then we get down to developing a plan on how to treat it. And the first steps of that plan is usually going to be pain relief, right? So some of the modalities that we might use with our hands-on therapy is something called uh, instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization. Some people would uh, know that as called Graston, right? It's a, uh, basically we take a stainless steel tool, we scrape along the painful areas, whether it's the muscle, the tendon, that bony prominence. Uh, we're gonna create like a healthy inflammation and that's going to help with the healing process and modulate some of that pain. Um, we may do some joint mobilizations, we move the patella around, we're gonna do some knee flexion, knee extension, just make sure everything's moving the way it needs to. And then from that point, we'll start developing a plan on how to get a little bit stronger, and that's kind of where you guys come in. Yeah, yeah, so a common misconception out there, everybody thinks like, oh, I have knee pain, so I'm just gonna stretch, stretch, stretch. Ross made a great point earlier about how that can be 
somewhat of a problem because in that process we might be neglecting the strengthening aspect of it and that seems to be where we see eye to eye as the most important factor um so i'll let you go a little bit on that realm yeah of course you know and even not if we're we may not even be talking about the youth athlete we might be talking about someone who's a little bit older just the active adult who's having some anterior knee pain uh, they may have been diagnosed with Osgood Schlatter's as, as a youth, but now it's presenting as something like patellar femoral syndrome or patellar tendonitis. But we go about treating it about the same way. So if we have a tendon injury, we're not going to constantly be stretching on that tendon. You know, if we think of the tendon as an anchor that claws into the bone and holds the, the muscle tight to the bone, when we have a tendonitis or an inflammation, that tendon becomes weaker. So now that grip onto the bone becomes a little softer. If we start stretching that muscle out, we're actually pulling the tendon from the bone, causing more inflammation, more irritation, more pain, and it slows down the healing process. So to a degree, stretching might be a decent idea, but we also wanna make sure we're strengthening that tendon. So we always put eccentric uh, strengthening into our program. So whether that be is a, um, like a descending single leg squat, maybe off of a, a wedge or a step, something like that, you know, some different ideas might be good to help strengthen up the quad and build some strength in that tendon to help decrease pain. Yeah, and this condition is also known as, it's the epitome of growing pains in these youth athletes where their growth plates haven't fully fused yet because they're still growing. And those areas where the bones are still growing happen to be the most susceptible to pain and injury. So if you're one of the, you know, it's, it's an unlucky condition, not everybody gets it, no two bodies are the same, we all grow at different rates. So if you're one of these people who suffers from this, it's important that you talk to a professional who can help you in terms of pre-competition and post-competition recovery modalities. You know, your warm-ups might look a little bit different than your teammates um, because you need this type of care and you want to play for the long haul. You don't want to be sidelined because of this. Uh, we're here, this is the whole point of this, is we want your ability to be full season without this hindering you. Absolutely, and the other, the other challenging part too is uh, going back to like the youth athlete, Nowadays, we know that the research has shown that specializing at a young age is not something that we want to do. You know, so we're getting more and more athletes that are playing multiple sports across multiple seasons. So it starts off with a little ache and pain in the knee, and then next thing you know, they played baseball, they played basketball, they did lacrosse, soccer. You know, they're playing in school and out of school, you know, club sports. So we're getting this year-round stress on the same area. And there's uh, no real good time for it to heal or, you know, getting into PT is maybe not something that is on the kids like top priority list or sometimes even the parents. So yeah. um, just understanding that there is a facility in this building here where we not only have the best strength and conditioning specialists here, but we also have expert physical therapists and we like to blend our programs together. So like we mentioned before, the first step is getting that initial evaluation, taking care of pain. The second step is now developing this good fundamental base of strength. And uh, it may start off as, you know, maybe once a week physical therapy, once a week strength and conditioning. And then as we get out of pain, we start creating that handoff where we push all the way towards strength and conditioning. But we still work together to develop the perfect plan specifically for that child or that adult. Um, and this way, in the long run, we create the best results and these pains don't, you know, come back. Yeah. And, you know, if have it keep your head up there's ways to negate this pain a little bit that's what we're here for that's, that's our goal and uh, one last question I wanted to ask for us is um, you see some research out there that may not always line up with what so-and-so says what somebody else says and we talked about this earlier today is, uh, don't believe everything you read on the internet um, to my point before no two bodies move the same so what works for him may not work for her everybody's pain and sensations of pain is going to be different and we need that individualized approach. So the question I was going to ask you is, is this something that is going to continue to be there as long as you're growing or is it something that will eventually go away um, in time? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so the actual presentation of Osgood Slaughters, we typically see it in young growing children. Um, the physical sign of that, that lump, that tendinosis, may always be there. You know, for example, I had a client who's an adult male who never had knee pain as a kid, uh, isn't in here treating with us for knee pain, but as I was doing my evaluation, I was like, oh, you had Oscar Schlatter. He's like, yeah, how'd you know? I was like, oh yeah, so the bumps on both knees. Yeah. Um, but it never bothered him. So, you know, in certain situations, yes, that, that pain may not be there, but the physical sign of it, 
uh, may still be there. And again, later on in life, it may present itself as something different, like a patellar tendonitis, a patellar femoral syndrome. Um, but like Mike was alluding to, you know, the, the big thing we try and talk to all of our clients about is don't go to Dr. Google or Dr. YouTube, you know, um, because not everybody is the same. And again, we're here to chase your symptoms. We're not going to chase the diagnosis. So our evaluation is what's going to really make the big difference. Um, and we'll be able to kind of pinpoint all the right areas that we need to work to get you specifically better. Um, and that's how we do well, you know, working so well together. Awesome. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. And, uh, you know, if Osgood Splatter's disease is something you're dealing with or you have a, a young athlete for a child or you know somebody who has Osgood Splatter's disease and wants some help and um, keeps falling into that internet rabbit hole and, you know, they're not finding all these tips to help, uh, we're here to give you that hands-on thorough evaluation and Hopefully you guys take us up on that. You know, we're happy to help anybody. Um, and if you want to reach out to us, you can go to olympiafitnessri.com, click the email tab. Feel free to ask a question. I'd be happy to get back to you and I'll let Ross talk about his contact info. Yeah, so you can also reach us at restoreptri.com. That's our website, same deal. Click on the contact button. You'll be able to send us either a, uh, an email. You can ask for a free discovery session where we can do like an initial screening and see what's going on and tell you whether PT or strength and conditioning might be the best route for you. Um, you can also check us out on our social media. So on Instagram, it's at restore PT underscore RI. Um, we always post out a lot of content. And I think both of us, both Restore Physical Therapy and Olympia Fitness Performance, um, our goal is to be the resource for the entire community. So this is why we put together information like this, you know, on both the Olympia end and the Restore end. So make sure you guys keep in touch with both of our pages, um, follow us, and don't hesitate to ever ask questions or reach out to us, even if you're in the tri-state area. We've had clients come in and train with us from New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, you know, and all throughout Rhode Island. So um, we are here for you guys. This is why we do what we do. And um, if you have any questions, definitely reach out to us and we hope to see you soon. Awesome. Thanks for watching guys. Reach out.